All right. Got yet another one of the uh, TV out kits to talk about today. Pardon the messy desk. It's been a, uh, it's been a process. I swear I'm working on it. Anyway, here's what we got. This is uh, this is an interesting kit. Uh, I just did the video uh, in this shell. You'll probably remember of the TV out kit. Uh, hold start select, hit L and R. Not start select. Select L and R. Uh, it turns the screen off. You plug in the cable and you get um, com composite out. Well, they went ahead and made a brand new version of the kit because, of course, they did. Why not? And uh, here's what you get. Tons of wire to install it. We will be skipping some steps tonight. Uh, forgive me, but I'm just just not feeling it. Um, I'll come back to it later. Got the screen, the converter, two ribbon cables, adapters, <clears throat> a little chunk of foam adhesive, two pieces of laser cut acrylic, screen, a uh, foam adhesive gasket, and then these two stickers that you're supposed to apply to the back of the screen and then to this thing here to prevent any shorts. But what is different about this kit compared to some of the other kits, I thought I had, oh, there it is. The other kits use uh, what, I've been, what I've taken to calling the 9380 LCD because it is out of a BlackBerry 9380. Uh, it's pretty typical to use in Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Advance SP, and some of the Game Boy Color kits. Uh, the newer Game Boy Color kits with the bigger screen use a uh, Q5 LCD because that's out of a BlackBerry Q5. Uh, but the uh, OEM sized backlight kits use one of these bad boys. So all three of those use the same screen. And then they decided to make a new kit based around this new screen here which you can see is physically a little bit smaller so it should make install a little bit easier but the part that has me confused is we've seen this screen before in uh, those cloud game store installs and I, I wasn't very happy with the performance of the LCD itself just because I didn't like how the LCD looked compared to the 9380 LCDs. Uh, I also did this in the uh, Latios Latios console. It's the exact same screen, but this is not from Cloud Game Store. This is from the manufacturer that I so affectionately refer to as One Chip because their kits all have this same one chip, which I guess now the TV version has two chips, but it's kind of besides the point. Uh, so this kit is drop in, except that to make it drop in, you have to do a lot of installing, um, at least to use all of the features of the kit. If you don't care for the actual TV out portion, then yeah, it is more or less drop in. You don't have to do any soldering, but that, that seems counterproductive getting this kit and then not using TV out. It seems, mm, I don't know. That's beyond me, but, you know, you do you, I guess. Uh, this kit was provided to me by Retro Game Repair Shop, and uh, normally I would throw a link in the description. So, you know, if you're interested in this kit, even after I uh, decide what I decide, and I, I'm not going to lie, I've already kind of made up my mind, but it is what it is. If you're interested in the kit, check the description. I'll have a link to it. If RGRS stocks them, I don't know if RGRS is going to be stocking them though, because I don't. It's just lower quality. These screens are lower quality than uh, 9380 kits. Anyway, this is our donor for tonight. I've got this horrible amalgamation of funny playing and um, it, my test mule for the. Uh, backlight kit 
Oh, I guess we'll do some wiring. Because I'll have to undo all that to test it on the new kit. But anyway. Let's try it out, shall we? <clears throat> I will not be testing the actual TV out portion of this kit tonight. Uh, that is unchanged from the previous kit. And, I mean, y'all saw my captures from last time. It wasn't pretty. But that was, again, that was my capture card itself. Not, not the kit. I'm sure this would look fantastic if you plug it into a CRT. I don't have a CRT. I'm also not getting a CRT. I'm sure it would look better if it were plugged into, uh, or at least better than my previous captures, not necessarily better than the CRT. But I'm sure it'd look pretty, pretty good plugged into like a retro tank or a frame meister or something, and then with HDMI capture, I don't have that either. I'd like to get one someday. Today is not that day though. And again, normally this would be a wire-free install, but at least if you don't want the TV out. But I am literally installing this in something that already has an IPS kit, so I will have to desolder that. I don't know where that wire went. It's okay. Alright, set this aside. And I am actually going to plug this into here so we can get a baseline power measurement. Because of course I'm going to test the power. Uh, it seems kind of silly to do that with uh, the IPS kit, at least to get a baseline. All right, let's try it out. Grab my game. The game I always test. Grab my power supply.
All right, it's set to 2.4 volts. That is perfect. Turn it on. And to power up this Game Boy, if you haven't seen that mod, uh, we just press this button once. It'll come on. Ooh, and I left off in a kind of weird place. So let's go to the exact same place I'm always at when I test this. I'm just going to save there. So baseline for this thing, we'll wait till that's done saving. I see 125 to 128. Nope. And as low as 94 to 128. At 2.4 volts, pulling anywhere from 94 milliamps to 128 milliamps. That's pretty typical. Turn this off, press the button, and hold. Ta da! We need the 40 pin cable for this. Contacts up. The uh, PCB side for the uh, IPS adapter, or excuse me, not IPS adapter. This is actually not an IPS screen. Or wait, is it? Shoot, now I don't remember. Don't quote me on that. Um, goes pins down on, on this side. This connector, of course mine is a wee bit bent. that around and uh, we'll try it like this hope for the best all right so in the exact same place with the exact same game at the exact same voltage on the exact same Game Boy. It is pulling anywhere from, yikes, 365 to 381 milliamps. That is a huge difference. I was under the impression that the purpose of this kit, like switching to this screen, was to reduce the power usage, not whatever the hell that is. That's brightness. All right, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
levels nine levels like usual on the lowest brightness let's pull in 226 to 239 milliamps next step up got 241 to 255 and then I bet each step is going to be pretty linear yeah and then we've also got the same color palettes as the other kit but let us double check and see if it re remembers those palettes And indeed it does. So it probably remembers brightness too. Should have paid better attention to that. All right, it's at minimum. And it's still at minimum. So yeah, I'm not impressed so far, but I don't know, I'll, uh, continue to we'll continue this install uh, but at least you know we've tested it we know it works all as well so we can continue the install and you don't need a power supply to do that you just drop the Game Boy into the rear housing and then pop batteries in it I just use the power supply because I like getting numbers on power usage All right. Gonna deinstall these touch sensors. I'm going to use the ones that are already in the case. And then uh, I would like that wire I desoldered earlier. So I can add it back in, but I don't know where it went. So we're going to try wiring this up to my power switch mod, making sure that functionality hasn't been broken with the new kits. Which ironically will actually break the uh, TV out functionality if we wire it this way. But that's okay. I said I wasn't going to test that tonight anyway. Tin that. Tin that. And then we want to tin ground and select. This does unfortunately not work with the funny playing kits. For those that want to do this power switch mod, I do have a video on it. I'll link it in the description. Pretty sure this is not adhered down. Nope, I was mistaken. Okay, so this isn't coming out of this shell. Shoot. Let me get 
this connector up. There we go. So what I want to see is, I think that was upside down that way. Doesn't matter. I know the connector goes over to this side. I want to see if this will even fit in an IPS ready shell. So yeah, it does, or at least it should, without <clears throat> without any trimming. You'll have to uh, have to center it with. Well, actually, these won't work. These are designed for an OEM shell. So you'll have to trim out all the IPS centering brackets in your IPS shell if you want to use that. Or you can use an OEM shell. That wasn't stuck down at all. But I'll take it. This goes here. We've got this one for the left. And then this one for the bottom. And then you'd use your uh, adhesive to lock it down into place. I'm not going to install it permanently in this shell because I just don't want to use this beat up shell. I wanted to use this one, but I already used the adhesive on that. And you've seen how far that will, uh, how far that gets me. So I'm also going to leave the uh, protective film on, but now would be the time to remove it. Actually, you know what? I should just install this. Let me go get a shell that I can install this in. So the dilemma I'm currently faced with is all of my donor shells look something like this and I just don't feel like cleaning them up. So it's going in here. Now they say that this is a uh, drop-in, no trim screen, but they are not being Fully truthful because you have to remove these little nubbins and uh, well the Dremel will work flush cutters are definitely the easiest tool you only have to remove the uh, left side nubbins. You don't have to don't have to do the full thing like on um, AGS 101 LCD installs. Otherwise the LCD is not flush, and well, what's the point of that? <laughs> if you look closely, you can see just a wee bit of the trim on the top left from the outside if you're using transparent, but I think it'll be okay. And let me just double check that. What's interesting is that it appears the screen actually lines up with this bottom bottom ridge. I just want to double check I don't have it in backwards. I don't see why it would make a difference. At least for, uh, I mean obviously <laughs> you want the screen the right way around. Uh, please don't misunderstand. <laughs> um, I just meant for uh, testing the fit. So that goes like that. And that goes in there. So yeah, cable on the right. I was 
I say this thing is absolutely getting a new lens, uh, which normally these kits come with, but this one did not, so I didn't have one handy. Let me grab one. Alright, so I was looking at my fancy lenses and then decided we're just going to use one of the older glass OEM style lenses with the uh, holographic logo there. But we're going to install the lens first. Uh, one of the worst things about these ones. If you try and peel it off and you don't get the whole darn thing and then you can't save the sticky bit because that happens. And it's just a waste. Then you gotta figure out how to get this out without scratching the lens but as long as your fingers aren't sweaty you can just do that. Oh, and then we gotta peel off this. There. And again, this is an OEM sized lens, not an IPS sized lens. In case you're wondering why that looks funny. Because you're used to the other ones. But anyway. Where is, there it is. I don't know which side is which. I haven't seen the instructions on this yet. Um, it would have made more sense actually to stick this adhesive in first because then you can just peel off this side or whichever side. Hell if I know. I'm gonna stick the thick side. Actually, it might not even matter. Yeah, shoot, this definitely should have gone on before the lens. Would have been much easier to line up. So in that case, Gonna do it like this. Because if you put it on before the lens, you can just leave that centerpiece in there and then line it up like that and then just push it through. But I didn't think that far ahead, so I didn't do that. I ruined it. Absolutely ruined it. Now pulling it up is going to stretch it out and I'm going to have a hard time. Ah, don't do it like I did.
That ain't great at all, but it's not visible from the outside, which is the important part. And if you really want to, you can peel the paper off these spacers, but you're not going to see them anyway. One goes there. One goes there. and then just press it into the foam. And I'm gonna remove this bottom one because it's just gonna get in my way. But the screen's in. Which means we can continue the install. And uh, before I get too much further, I'm supposed to put this on the back of the screen. And wow, this is not sized for this screen. This is sized for the old screen. So it's uh, kind of big. But all right. And now I need to finish up the wiring. I am going to I am not wiring this in a conducive manner, but you guys have seen me wire these things so many times. I highly recommend removing the PCB from the shell and from the screen if you're going to be soldering to it like I am. I put that paper in because it's lift ooh because it's lifting the PCB up. I don't want any of the heat on the LCD screen itself. I'm also confident in my ability to get in and out of there really quick. Uh, if you're not confident in your ability to do that, don't don't do this. Just remove it from the shell. Pretty sure these are backwards, but we'll find out in just a moment. Put the touch sensors back in. because that will be the only way to toggle the pallets and I left one of the pallets enabled. I think it did. I don't know. It has memory, so if you play with the pallets while you're testing and then remove the touch sensors, you're probably going to have a bad time. Drop that right there, put it right up against the lens area so we can toggle it from the front, you know, so the sensors are hidden. This 
slightly longer wire would have been nice. But that's technically not where it's supposed to go. It's just where I like putting it. It would also probably help if that wasn't tangled up there, but too late. Also, be wise to put in the LED light pipe. And we're pretty much done. And I did forget the uh, this plastic. I'm gonna have a hard time getting that in with these wires here. We'll try it anyway. All right, here we go. Now we're almost done. Put that in. Tuck those wires in. going to use this rear housing because of my power switch mod. This housing is already trimmed. Also I have no idea where the uh, rest of the shell is.
Uh oh. Oh, I don't think I think one of those batteries wasn't seated. Ta-da! And my brightness controls work, but like I said, of course it's backwards. And then I have the brightness control under the lens. And then the touch sensor right there for palettes. Let's do some testing. That is not the flashcard I thought it was. It's over here. I found it. So let's do 240p, because we want the grid. We want to see how badly this screen is cut off, and it is quite a bit. These things are allegedly sized for OEM lenses, and as you can see that it's not quite good enough. Um, maybe an IPS lens would be a little bit better, but you can also see that it is not centered. So, hell, it even looks a little bit crooked. Uh, such is life. Uh, unfortunately, because I use the foam, which looks terrible at an angle, by the way, because I use the foam, I can't really reposition the screen. Not easily, anyway. But, it is what it is. At the very least, it is the proper aspect ratio. And... Which one is it? I always forget which one it is. There's one with a whole bunch of lines. That wasn't it, but that'll work. And you can see it is nice, sharp, integer scaling. Looks pretty good. Let us try out the other easy flash. I think this one works. Rather, I think this one has the ROMs on it that I'm looking for. It does not. Shoot. Ah, uh, it's under everything, of course. This one has the ROMs on it, because I have the wrong SD card in it. The SD cards between these two are to be swapped. All right, what I wanted was the scrolling bars test because we want to see resets, which look fine to me. I don't see any tearing. I don't see any frame dropping other than that one when the LCD is issued a reset command. And I want Zelda.gb scroll past it every single time. And here we're going to check two things. We are going to check transparency effects and we're going to check um, for any artifacts from the pixel response times uh, or ghosting. So usually I'm looking at these little logs on the grass and seeing if you can see any artifacts as the screen scrolls and 
I don't know. Looks pretty darn good to me. Uh, the other thing we want to check is transparency effects, which I don't know how well the video is picking up, but they look pretty much as good as you can get with uh, this type of screen, which is to be expected because the last few kits have been pretty spot on too. Oh, and there you go, that's something interesting. I can adjust brightness on these without toggling widescreen. <laughs> Neat. Anyway. Yeah. It is what it is. Um, I'm not too impressed. I still think the older kit's better. I've seen these screens before, and I haven't been impressed with them. For reference here is the exact same kit, just with the older screen. The two side by side, or almost. why it was down there. Okay. I'll kill all my desk lighting. Well, most of it. And side by side, it's not bad. I still prefer this one, uh, but I think these screens are actually getting a little bit better because... Uh, I mean, it's still a little bit more washed out, but... Interestingly, the old one gets darker. I'll have to measure this, um, but I think the new one, or the old one, gets brighter, too. It's close, though. But, yeah, I mean, they're both fine. I think the, uh, I still think the, uh, 9380 version of the kit is the better buy. Not only do you get a bit bigger screen, you get a screen with better color representation, and you have shells that it just drops into. You don't have to... Like, this drop-in screen, I had to modify this shell so I could drop it in flat. Um, if you want to see what it looks like without modifying the shell, check out my video on the Cloud Game Store drop-in LCD. I'll have a link in the description. Just skip all the way to the end. I did not modify that shell for the screen, and you can tell because the screen itself just sits at an angle within the shell, and it it looks bad. This looks better, but it's still not it's still not great. Uh, also, the white foam was a very poor choice. The black foam on the uh, other kits is a much much better choice. Uh, but I mean, I, I can't fault it. It does work. Um, I suppose I'll do a follow-up to this video because this one's getting pretty, uh, pretty long. It's about to overstay its welcome. I'll do a follow-up to this video where we'll actually hook it up to the, um, TV out because I did not do that here. And, uh, I'll show you how to do the pin one method because in this kit, when, when I did the video for this version, I did the pin three method, which is quite a bit easier. You just solder to pin three of the link port and then you're done. Uh, unfortunately, there are link cable caveats with that. Uh, as I showed in a follow-up video, um, I'll put this stuff in the description because I'm 
my memory is kind of failing me right now, but if I recall correctly, Game Boy Color linking did not work at all. Game Boy Advance linking did work, but I can't remember if you had to be player one or player two. Uh, the wireless link accessory was recognized, but it errored out whenever you tried to actually use it. Um, and I did test this after that other video. GameCube linking doesn't work at all. I'll uh, stay tuned if you don't believe me. Um, whereas with the pin one method, all of that will still work except for the wireless adapter. That still won't work because that requires pulling power from the Game Boy and when you use pin one, well, you disconnect power. But all the other linking stuff should still work if you use the pin one method. But you know, it's a little bit more complicated of an install. And, you know, since you're cutting off power, you won't be able to use your uh, worm light anymore. Not that I suppose it's that big of a deal, but... Yeah, uh, any accessories that require external power will not work with the pin one method. Um, but most linking doesn't work at all with the pin three method, so it's pick your poison there. Uh, you can, if you want, just wire up your own port. It is, uh, it's just composite, so you can just wire up your own TRS jack and plug in that way. It's not too difficult, but that will require some cutting. But either way, there you go. There is your solder-free drop-in Game Boy Advance TV out kit that is not at all solder free uh, if you actually want to use all the features and is not at all drop in if you actually want it to look good. Um, unlike the older version which is drop in if you get an IPS ready shell which is a thing and they work great. Uh, but there you go. That's all I've got. Um, sorry for rambling sorry if I didn't cover everything that you were looking to get out of this video like I said I will do a follow-up where we'll uh, hook it up with pin one oops I hit the touch sensor and um, I'll show you how to do that it should be pretty quick but I just I'm out of steam at this point I can't can't go any further but anyway thanks for watching if you have any questions please you know there's comments down there. I do try and read them all, even if I don't respond to them all. Um, I might not be able to answer your questions, but someone else who's reading might be able to. Uh, if you're looking for actual troubleshooting help, I'm probably not going to be able to help you there. Not that I can't troubleshoot it, but I get so many questions, people asking me to troubleshoot their Game Boy, I just simply don't have the time. Uh, I'd recommend checking out the Game Boy Discord. There's a channel exclusively for troubleshooting there. They'll, uh, plenty of friendly people, they'll help you out. Just, you know, make sure to describe your issue clearly and bring pictures, clear pictures. Um, but otherwise, thanks for watching, guys. Please be sure to check out the description. Plenty of links down there, too. Um, I'll throw a link to this video and this kit down there. I won't have a link for this one unless... Unless RGRS starts stocking it within the next few days, which I, I don't know if that's going to happen. For context, it is the 7th today. By the time I have this uploaded and published, it'll probably be the 9th or the 10th. And if it's not up by then, there won't be a link. It is what it is. There might not ever be a link. Anyway, rambling again. Sorry. Have a fantastic night.